You saw this one coming on affirmative action, didn't you, Jeffrey? Oh, boy, Tony, you know, 15 minutes ago, the Supreme Court was at war with itself Whoa. in a drama that is rarely seen uh, inside that room. You had two justices basically uh, shouting out, not, not literally, but you talking about the very premises of what it means to be an American. That was what was at stake mm. in the court today. And the drama and the anger and the passion was something that's rarely seen in that courtroom. Chief Justice John Roberts saying that the students who didn't get, the white students who didn't get the school of their choice in Louisville and Seattle were equivalent to the black students in Brown v. Board of Education um, who were denied access to integrated schools in Topeka, Kansas. Oh Stephen Breyer responding, you have got to be kidding me that the efforts in good faith of uh, these schools in Louisville and, and Seattle uh, to integrate their schools to make sure that there's diversity. How dare you compare that to the discrimination of Jim Crow? I mean, it was a fascinating uh, illustration of just how divided this court is at this moment. And, and the, the, the school systems in question weren't talking about a 50-50 balance, uh, were they? They were just talking about meeting a threshold of about 15%. Uh, of, of, of balance, diversity in the, in the schools. Actually, and very few students were actually affected by this program. Uh, so a narrow decision here. Uh, well, in, these, in the school plans, uh, the vast majority of the students in both Seattle and Kentucky got their first choice. Sure. They got to choose. But a handful of students were not given their first choice because in Kentucky, the school wanted to make sure the, the, the school board wanted to make sure that no school had fewer than 15 percent minorities yes. or more than 50 percent minorities. That was the balance they were trying to achieve and Stephen Breyer said, fine, there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly what school boards should be allowed to do. But the majority of the court said no. That was the use of race. That was a violation of the equal protection of the laws and the Constitution is colorblind. Yes. That's what the majority view was. I think a lot of school boards are now going to have to reevaluate their, their, uh, um, their policies if they consider race at all. Uh, so, Do you a, believe that's the way it's going to play out? Because uh, when I say narrow, we're talking about uh, a few slots here that were at question. Do you think that will lead to school systems around the country reevaluating the programs? I do, absolutely, Tony, be, because what this court said was even though mm -hmm. only a few slots yeah. were determined by race, that's too many. It, mm -hmm. You just simply can't consider race in deciding which school which kids go to. Justice Kennedy, who, who was the swing vote, suggested that maybe possibly you could do it sometimes, but clearly the message of, of, the, uh, of the court majority here is that race is out mm -hmm. as a consideration in uh, school uh, assignments. So and a lot of districts still use it and are considering using it, and they're going to have to change. So the, do you predict the majority view of this decision is going to be that it is a decision that is a setback for affirmative action in this country? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That this is a decision that says uh, school districts cannot use any racially uh, racial factors to decide how to assign kids. This was a victory for conservatives. Uh, Justice Breyer used a phrase, uh, n never in the history of the court have so few done so much so quickly. And he was talking about Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito making this court a far more conservative institution in just one year. And at that phrase, never have so, much, so few done so much so quickly, both Justice Alito and Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, kind of looked over at Breyer and went, whoa, that, that's pretty personal by the standards of the Supreme Man, Court. That is, I think we had a sense, even when we were talking about it earlier this morning, that this decision could reverberate and be huge. And, and I, I certainly hear you saying that. Oh, Jimmy. absolutely. I mean, th this, this is going to rank with the great, important school desegregation opinions of uh, the court's history, starting with Brown v. Board of Education in 1954. This one, of course, is, is one where the school districts were told they couldn't integrate yeah. their schools. Uh, so coming from the opposite direction, in fact, Justice Breyer read a series of opinions where he said this opinion goes in the exact opposite direction. <sighs>
Our CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin on this. Jeffrey, appreciate.